We're through to the quarterfinals here at the Women's Championships at the Ford Australian Open. And Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, the number one seed, the number two player in the world, is very much the player to stop here. She's playing very well. She's only lost 14 games in four matches. And she's in the top half of the draw where there are no seeds left. Her biggest challenge and obstacle may be the fact that there's some pressure riding on this for her. If she were to win this title, she becomes only the sixth player to ever get ranked number one in the world since the ranking started in 1975. It's something she's worked very hard to achieve, and she's very close to getting. The top half of the draw has some terrific stories. Naoko Sawamatsu of Japan has overcome some tremendous obstacles in the fact that her home was destroyed by the earthquake that devastated the Kobe area. And she's using this tournament as a great incentive to work for her country. And she's playing very well. Tough player to stop in the top half. Also, Marianne Wardell Whitmire, the oldest player left in this tournament at 27 years old, playing some of the best tennis of her career. She's been out there a while, eight years on the circuit. And this is her best Grand Slam event ever. She's up against Angelica Galvaldon, another unseated player, having a terrific tournament. She also once reached the quarterfinals here at the Australian Open in her debut Grand Slam back in 90. Some great matches in the top half of the draw. A lot of exciting things happening. The bottom half of the draw, played today, in action today, Mary Pierce, the number four seed, up against number eight seed, Natasha Zvereva. And Pierce was dominating in the first set, showing a all-court game. Pierce only lost nine points in the opening set. She took 6-1. Showing great depth and speed off the return. And penetrating ground strokes. Mary Pierce had a break early in the second set. And it was at this time that Zvereva started to fight back. Zvereva always a dangerous player. An enigma, you're never quite sure what she's going to bring to the court. But she's capable of these kinds of things. She can stretch you out all over the court with angles. Being one half of the best doubles team in the world, you know she can volley. Pierce was up 4-3 in the second set. Down love 30 on her serve right here. She had been serving extremely well, 84% throughout this match. That was a double fault. And this set up a break to get things square in the second set. Nick Boletari, who is unfortunately going to have to leave Mary to fend for herself at the Australian Open. He's got some commitments back at home. And that was a huge point for Natasha Zvereva. She had started to fight back into this match. This is a break point for Pierce. Game and a double fault from Zvereva did not help her cause. Pierce leads five games to four. Pierce now will serve for the match. She was forced to fight off two break points in serving for this match. And this is match point. Pierce is playing with tremendous confidence right now. She made a big breakthrough last year at the French Open where she reached her first Grand Slam final. So she knows what it's like to be around in the later stages of a big tournament. She will be tough to beat. She showed tremendous signs of maturity today to subdue a potentially dangerous Natalia Zvereva. Also up today, the number two seed, Conchita Martinez, taking on the highest ranked American in the number six seed, Lindsay Davenport. Conchita Martinez won the first set, 6-3 in a set that was filled with Davenport errors. But in the second set, Lindsay came back, cleaned up her act, cut down on the unforced errors, and produced some more winners. set, it was Conchita Martinez who took the third 6-3, winning the match, 6-3, 4-6, 6-3, to get into her first Australian Open semi-final. 
Martinez will now meet number four seed Mary Pierce in one semifinal. And tomorrow we'll find out what the other semifinal will be when Sanchez Vicario takes on Naoko Sawamatsu of Japan and unseated Angelica Gavaldon will play another unseated player in Marion Riddell Whitmire, who's having a tournament of her life. Introducing Ford Contour. He is. Just look at that. He's been covering his face with his towel. And uh, we can only speculate about why. I would guess right now that he's, he wants very badly to win this match for his coach, for, for Tim Gillickson, who has had to leave. Before this match even began, he's had a couple of minor strokes. A third here, and he was in hospital for the last three days. He left today with his U.S. Davis Cup captain, twin brother, Tom. It's only a guess we can't be sure, but knowing Pete the way we do, yeah. That's our guess from here. I, I would agree with that, Mary. I don't think it's because of any blisters or any no the fact that he's, that he's come back from two sets of love. I certainly feel it is. His personal relationship with his coach has been with him for the last, what, four years? Thank and you. you can see deep breath there. He wants this tournament for his coach. In that last in a, in a grab that we had earlier that he uh, thought of his coach throughout the last match when he played uh, a very tough one against Magnus Larsen. and Betsy, the poignancy and drama of watching Pete Sampras try to win the Australian Open title for his coach Tim, Tim Gullickson can be matched on the women's side as well as unseated Naoko Sawamatsu of Kobe, Japan tries desperately to bring some good news to her earthquake-ravaged country. And that she's doing, I mean, but her entire life was turned upside down with this earthquake. It took her several tries to even get through to her family to find out if they were safe. They are, but her home was destroyed. The university from where she was to graduate in a couple of months was, was leveled. I mean, everything about her life is completely abnormal. Uh, and she said that the best thing she can do for her country is to put a good performance in here, and she's done that. She's already taken out the number seven seed of Kamiko Date, and she followed that with a good win over Mary Jo Fernandez, the 11th seed. Now she faces the top seed and a player who can become number one in the world if she wins two more rounds, Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. That's an emotional time for her too then. It is. It's a big moment for uh, Sanchez Vicario because she has never entered a Grand Slam event where she's been the number one seed. And of course, Steffi Graf not here. She is the number one seed. She also has a chance to become only the sixth player ever to get ranked number one on the computer rankings since they started in the 70s. And she, she says uh, she's very close to getting it. One spot left in the semis being fought at now between Salamatsu and Sanchez Vicario. Already through earlier today, Marianne Wardell Whitmire, who had taken out the fifth seed Gabriela Sabatini. She also took out Angelica Gavaldon of Mexico, who had knocked out Yana Novotna, the third seed. On the bottom part of the draw, Mary Pierce hasn't come close to dropping a set. She next plays Conchita Martinez, the second seed in the semis. Martinez has had three three setters in a row. Leo Sanchez watches on. He doesn't sit next to uh, his wife in situations like these. <laughs> they have to split up a little bit. Sanchez Vicario has a, a pretty good percentage of serves and she's winning a majority of those points whereas Sawamatsu who's got an extremely high percentage 80% in but she's only winning 35% of those those points that's a telling number that makes that that lets you know that there's nothing on the Sawamatsu serve she's just trying to bend them in and they're being punished how much you'd rather return than serve. Fifteen all. That one gets pulled wide. Fifteen all. In fact, you could almost say that really about both players. Is Marissa Aranch's mom looks on. She's a, she's not one of your most relaxed mothers out there, is she? <laughs> uh, she's a wonderful a wonderful lady. She travels 
and watches a ranch everywhere. Sanchez Vicario's serve has picked up over the last couple of years. It used to be just a way to put the ball in play. Not a good enough approach, and Sanchez Vicario lets her know it. 30, 15. Sawamatsu trying to punish the return, but just not enough on the approach. Slightest chance to get back 40, to the 50. point, she will. Tremendous defender. And now two match points. <laughs> Game set in match. Sanchez Vicario, two sets to low. 6-1, 6-3. Made it look easy in just over one hour. Arancha Sanchez Vicario has made her way into the Australian Open semifinal. For the fifth time, Sanchez Vicario has been in this position. She's just so good off the baseline. So, just no weaknesses anywhere in her game for a player like Sawamatsu, who just had the tournament of her life. It's been her best Grand Slam event ever in, in the the wake of the earthquake in Kobe and what she's done for her country, it's been a tremendous effort for her. It really has. Sanchez Vicario, what's the class of uh, the match and it show? So, there are only four women left now in the Australian Open Championship. of the Australian Open tomorrow. Well, there's Mary Pierce. She's already been in a Grand Slam final. Her win over Sebi Groff in last year's French Open semi was one of the great moments of the 94 season. Her opponent provided one of the other great moments of last year, Conchita Martinez taking the Wimbledon crown over Martina Navratilova. Then there's Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. She's already won three Grand Slams, including two last year, the French and the U.S. Open over Steffi Groff. And then there's me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's that? What's she doing here? That's Marianne Wardell Whitmire. She knocked off the fifth seed, Gabriella Sabatini, in the first round and never looked back. Have a look at the draw now. Sanchez Vicario, the top seed against Marianne Wardell Whitmire, and then Mary Pierce against Conchita Martinez. Tomorrow's women's semis start at 1 p.m. Eastern time here on ESPN. And when we come back, it's Andre Agassi against Yevgeny Kafelnikov. Yes, it's, uh... Mary Pierce is 20 years old, 5'11". She was born in Montreal, Canada. Lives now in Paris and Bradenton, Florida. Coaches Nick Bolletieri. He left. Play. He was with her until today and then Sven Grunwald is with her. He's one of the Bolletieri camp. First ball in the air. Back. Love she's 22 years old and she's from Barcelona now. It's where most of the great Spanish players gravitate to because it's the most successful tennis city in Spain by a long way. Fifteen. Love fifteen. Love 30. A real interesting matchup here because these two have never met. 
interestingly enough, so they really they, they don't know each other's games. Obviously, they've seen each other play so much, then they've got their cheat sheets on each other, but not having played one another before. I love food. Sven Gruneveld, the coach of Mary Pierce for uh, just under a year now. Love 40. Break points for Conchita Martinez. Big forehand of Mary Pierce. What do you were talking about cheat sheets and things just a minute ago? What kind of things do you think they have in mind regarding playing against each other? As you mentioned, they haven't played against each other yet, Betsy. Well, Mary Pierce will come out. She, she's looking to take control of every point as quickly as she can. Oh! Ooh. 34. Four long and uh, Conchita Martinez, a glance over there, but it's 30-40, still break point for Martinez. Conchita Martinez, what she'll be trying to do is use every inch of the court. She's got the tremendous topspin with a forehand. The ball will jump off the court. Very penetrating slice will stay low. She'll try to keep Pierce out of that hitting zone. Three in a row for Mary Pierce and it's Deuce first game. Pierce has improved her serve. She's hitting it flatter, she's hitting it harder, she's probably added a good five miles per hour on that serve. One of the things Boletieri uh, did for her serve is bring the ball down a little bit, not so high. It's still high, but not as high as it was. Oh! Advantage Pierce. Which I think is a very good move, Betsy. I mean, she used to throw that thing six, eight feet above where she made contact with the ball. And, and uh, one of the things that I said, Boletieri said, is to bring it down to make the swing more compact. Yeah, I think she also moved it uh, a little bit more to the right. She used to get that toss way over her head and, and therefore played it with too, maybe too much spin. Now she's flattened it out. And she's getting uh, many free points off of her serve. Game point, Pierce. Oof. Jeez. Not even close. Completely lost control of it. Uh, early match nerves? Well, I'm sure there has to be some. I mean, both players, this is the furthest either player ha has gone here at the Australian Open. But they both know what it's like to face this kind of an occasion. type of point that Pierce plays so well. When she sees an opportunity to move forward, she moves well inside the baseline and just pounces on any, any loose ball in the middle of the court. Game point again for Pierce. survives three break points against her serve and wins the first game it's one game to love this is best of three semi-final of the women's singles it has not been a well-played match clearly so far but uh, she's on the brink of another Final Grand Slam. Well, Martinez has made it clear that she doesn't feel that comfortable playing big hitters. Gigi Fernandez watching. Martinez had a 
difficult time beating Lindsay Davenport in the quarterfinals, who plays very similarly to Mary Pierce, maybe not as consistently. Lindsay took her to three sets. 15 all. So in the absence of Jennifer Capriati, who's still contemplating a full-time return to tennis, Monica Sellis, we don't really know the story of whether she's coming back or not. She hasn't played since the spring of two years ago. And of course, Steffi Graf, who was injured. All of which have hurt the women's field, but Mary Pierce here on the brink of taking advantage of all of that. Yeah, she stepped up and said, uh, I can do this. Match point for Mary Pierce. Conchita Martinez has not won her serve in the second set. Mary Pierce turns out in a relatively easy fashion. Is in the final of the Australian Open to back up her final at the French Championships last year. Mary Pierce had totally her way in this match. She controlled points from early on, almost every point. Martinez could not make any dent into the Pierce game. She was never allowed to really move inside the baseline and, and, and to use any of her great variety in her game. Mary, Mary Pierce has a real shot of winning this title. 32 unforced errors from Conchita Martinez, 26 unforced errors from Mary Pierce. She's going to have to clean that up just a little bit. The winner, Mary Pierce, will take on in the final Marianne Werdel Whitmire or Arancha Sanchez Vicario. More from the Ford Australia. She prepared for today's match with a top seed. There's not much time to browse by the pool these days for American Marianne Werdel Whitmire. She's been busy winning matches here at the Australian Open. And for the first time in nine years on the tour, she has advanced past the third round of a Grand Slam. Marianne, what is, this is a new experience. What does this feel like? You're in the semifinals of a Grand Slam event. First time ever for you. Um, to tell you the truth, I haven't really thought about it yet. Been just trying to concentrate on my matches, not think about what round I'm in. I'm sure on the plane home it'll hit me when I get home. But uh, for now, I haven't really, really thought too much about being in the semis. So it hasn't really sunk in. I mean, you're not new to the circuit, nine years out here, and uh, this is the best Grand Slam event you've ever had, and uh, so you, you, it's, it hasn't really sunk in? No, not yet. I mean, definitely been out here a while, the old lady of all the people who are left, that's for sure. So, but no, I mean, I'm definitely very excited to be where I am, and I've played great this whole week. Haven't really had any bad matches, so I'm really excited to play the next one. Well, in your... Um I mean, have you, in your free time, have you just been uh, swamped with press, and have you had time to enjoy anything out there? Um, yeah, I've been swamped a little bit with press, but they're good about, you know, organizing certain times. But we've been having a lot of tour meetings here and done some shopping and, you know, sightseeing and wandered around. So it's, it's had, when you play every other day, you have a lot of extra time. Marion, you, you've been out on the circuit for a while. You've been out here for about nine years. Does this performance here affect any plans you might have made about your, your future? No, it hasn't really entered into it, because the last year or so, I've definitely enjoyed the tour more than I ever have. So, um, yeah, I've been enjoying it and haven't really been thinking about quitting too much. You usually think about quitting when you're not playing well and dreading leaving home and all the traveling. So, just going along and going to keep, keep at it.
She is at it right now on the centre court against the top seed, Arantxa Sanchez Vicario of Spain. We're going to join that match with Sanchez Vicario leading five games to two in the first set. Mary Carrillo joins Betsy Nagelson for the call. Sanchez Vicario with a 5-2 lead. Back in Flinders Park, Mary Carrillo along with Betsy Nagelson. We're watching Arantxa Sanchez Vicario struggle a bit. Some unforced errors have crept into her game, but she still has the lead, 5-4, and she's got serve, too. Sanchez Vicario got off to a, a very good and quick start, taking a four-love lead, and Wardell Whitmire got on the board. There was a great ovation from the, from the crowd here. They wanted to see a good match, and she's doing it the hard way. She's clawing her way back up to this thing, 5-4. That's the forehand that Sanchez Vicario loves. She curls that forehand around, gets good angle. 15 long. Serving volleyers uh, playing against Sanchez Vicario always look for this forehand to go cross court. It's her favorite one. A lot of court open there. 15 love. That's the play. You can, you can see before Marion even uh, got a good stride into that backhand that she intended to follow, follow up behind it. Watch how she moves through this backhand. This is perfectly struck. Wrong footing, Sanchez Vicario. Another forehand error. Up to 19 now for, for Marianne. She's got to keep going for it, though. She does. I, mean, she's, I think if she, if she hits it a little bit earlier, it'll show that she's confident enough to really tag it and mean it. Exactly. She's, if she goes for her shots, you expect to see... Oh, yeah, look at that. No back down. Oh, boy. That one just flying. So now a couple of set points for Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. Betsy, that we felt it was absolutely essential for Marianne Rodell Whitmire to get off to a good start. She did not, and yet she has made uh, some moves in. I mean, what do you think now? Can she work her way into this match, or is now Sanchez a few minutes away from a rematch of last year's French Open final? Mary Pierce earlier today. Boss Conchita Martinez all over the court. Of course, this surface um, will, I think, bear well, bode well for Mary Pierce because, uh, obviously, the, the, the dirt, the red clay, Sanchez Vicario just loves, she loves to slide and move on that surface. And this surface really favors Mary Pierce because uh, she, she's yeah. got good footwork. She's just got bad balance. I mean, she's, got, she's not nearly as agile as Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, but she'll have better footing because it's a hard court. Yeah, that's a winnable match. That goes 15 out. All. 15 all. She doesn't play her best since. Yeah. Sanchez Vicario wins her first Australian Open on Saturday.
Tertio. And now match point for Sanchez Vicario. First serve. opinion, Arantxa Sanchez Vicario or Mary Pierce? Well, Sanchez Vicario is playing so well right now, and you have to go out and you have to beat her. Mary Pierce is as confident as I've ever, as I've ever seen her. It's going to be a tremendous match. You think she's ready for a breakthrough? I think she is. I think it's time. I, she's, she's here without Nick Boletari, but that's okay. She's got to win it on her own, and uh, I think she's, this is a very winnable title for Mary Pierce. Sanchez Vicario would Love to take the title, make her the number one player in the world. Uh, something she's been looking to achieve ever since she first began the game. And uh, it's, it's, that match has a, a lot of drama in it. It really does. And a tip of our conical hat to Marianne Wardell. Unseated, took out Gabriela Sabatini and just kept going. Played very good tennis. Entirely too many unforced errors in this match. But uh, a terrific experience for Marianne Wardell. by Steffi Graf as the number one player in the world and today it may be Arantxa Sanchez Vicario's turn. Well, a great opportunity for Sanchez Vicario, something she's dearly anticipated. She had such a phenomenal year last year, winning two of the four Grand Slams. Here she is at the French Open last June, having gotten to the finals of the Australian Open, playing Mary Pierce on the far side. Mary Pierce had had a phenomenal French Open, only losing ten games en route to the final, destroying Graf in the semis. So you can see what kind of a match Sanchez Vicario played in the final. She waited five years to take her second French Open title. Eight tournament titles last year. A terrific year. Over $3 million in prize money. And a couple of months later, at the U.S. Open, Sanchez Vicario came from behind to beat the number one seed, Steffi Graf, in the final. This was a tournament she dearly wanted. Can she do it, Betsy? Is she going to make number one this time? Well, it could be official today. I mean, there are a lot of people who believe that last year, Sanchez Vicario deserved to be the number one player in the world. She had the best year of anybody. She was the most dominant player. Today, she can officially make that happen. Okay, but for the computer to actually register her as number one, she is going to have to take on, Mary Carrillo, what you call a big babe tennis girl. The best of the big babes, really, is Mary Pierce. She's tall. She's got all kinds of native power. She, bits, she hits the ball very hard, very flat. She goes for her shots. She makes a lot of errors as well. But there is no back down if you're a big babe. She's going to fire from all sides and see if she can beat Arantxa Sanchez Vicario to win her first Grand Slam title. More on big babe tennis when we come back after this break. The 1995 Ford Australian Open is... 78 degrees becoming sunny. Moderate winds north-northeast. It's really a beautiful day today. The roof is open. Yesterday, though, it was closed as Andre Agassi beat Aaron Crickstein, and then moments after that match, the court flooded when the runoff drain to the Yarra River, which is close by, overflowed. Well, some local fans had fun with that, kind of like an indoor pool. So indeed did Sverova and Fernandez, who earlier in the day lost in the women's doubles final. Well, today's match will be played in beautiful weather. The court is dry and ready for action. Today's match is a rematch of last year's French Open final. Sanchez Vicaria won that one, but today is different. These women have met before. They're familiar with each other. 
We both know each other really well. We both have a lot of confidence, and I think it's going to be a very interesting match. Sanchez Vicario's ability to hustle to all parts of the court and Pierce's fierce ground strokes have landed them both in a Grand Slam final. Again. But this time, Pierce says she's better prepared. She's been working on her speed, agility, and power. To say how you work his off, so I've been working pretty hard, so um, hopefully uh, it's okay. Her coach, Sven Gruneveld, formerly with the Rancha, says not only has Mary gotten faster, but she's developed in all aspects of her game. She's uh, definitely matured as a person. Uh, she's become more professional, and she knows more about the sport, and uh, definitely is a better competitor. She'll need that competitive edge against Sanchez Vicario, who's poised to become number one. Who play the best will be the one who will win. Mary would move up to a career high number three in the world with the win over Arantia. Pierce is powerful, five inches taller, and at 20, just learning to have fun. You ready? Big, big. Shoot! <laughs> you guys better be ready. <laughs> You're going to see some big, big tennis. Big Babe Tennis describes Mary Pierce's game. She'll need the power to overcome the defensive skills and shot making of Sanchez Vicario to claim her first Grand Slam title. It's a match of two young professionals, both on the rise. It's so nice to see uh, Mary Pierce off the court. She's such a violent, hard-hitting player, but she's so soft and sweet off the court. Who's more ready to win this match, Betsy? Uh, this is a very winnable title for Mary Pierce, but uh, I think the interesting thing, Mary, is there's so many interesting variables involved in today's final. Uh, first of all, Sanchez Vicario, she's supposed to win today. She's used to the underdog status. She's usually upsetting top-ranked players to win Grand Slam finals. Today, she's supposed to win. Mm -hmm. Also, the whole dream come true thing. She's been wanting to be number one in the world ever since she started to play the game. Today, that can become a reality for her. Also, Sven Grunewald has coached both players. That's today, he's sitting, he's sitting in Mary Pierce's box. So... I just really believe that who handles the external circumstances today is going to come out the winner. Yeah, it could be a really good final. We'll, we'll be watching. Cliff? Thanks a lot, Mary. Fred Stolly, the fiery one, will join us to talk about the men's final, a dream final tomorrow here at the Australian Open. Agassi versus Pete Sampras for the championship and the title Australian Open winner. Introducing the tennis hip clip, an idea that is... A look here at Rancho Sanchez Vicario, now Mary Pierce, as they make their way to this stadium court at Flinders Park, which, by the way, is the finest indoor stadium anywhere in the world. Let's take a look at the women's draw. Rancho Sanchez Vicario took out the surprising Savamatsu of Japan, who had beaten Mary Jo Fernandez, and then she took on Marianne Werdel Whitmire of the USA. Mary Pierce, on the other hand, in the Quarterfinals took out Natalie Sverova, the number eight seed, and then Conchita Martinez, Wimbledon champion, seeded number two to make it to today's final. So the number four seed, Mary Pierce, takes on the number one seed, Arancha Sanchez Vicario. A lot of seeds fell out of the top part of that draw. That's why Sanchez Vicario has made it all the way to this title match without facing a seed. Uh, Mary Jo Fernandez was up on top. The third seed, Yana Novotna, was up there. Kamiko Date was up there. Sabatini, she flamed out in the first round. So it's been a much easier set of opponents for Sanchez Vicario than Pierce. Ariane Werdil Whitmire took out Sabatini in the first round. And uh, just in case you thought it was a fluke, she made it all the way to the semifinals in her best Grand Slam effort ever. Now, though, it is up to Mary Pierce of France to see whether she can deny Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, temporarily at least, uh, a number one world ranking. There's some Pierce fans. Sanchez Vicario in the semifinal, and her win over Marion Wardell Whitmire, who plays very similarly to Mary Pierce in that she also is a exponent of the big babe tennis. I mean, she hits the ball very hard from both sides. So Sanchez Vicario got to look at uh, a very similar kind of game in the semifinal, Mary Pierce en route to the final, she did beat a couple of seeds, so she had a couple of, uh, uh, of good wins. She did not drop a set en route either. Made a lot of mistakes though, didn't she, uh, Betsy, in that semi-final match? She won it handily, but uh, it was an error-prone match generally. She's gonna have to sort of upgrade her level here. Yeah, yeah she'll have to uh, be altogether different in this final. Conchita Martinez did not play well at all in that semi-final. 
Sanchez Bacardi is 23 years old. Barcelona, Spain is where she was born and she lives close to there still. And she, of course, is the holder now of two Grand Slam titles, trying to make it three out of four. The only one that she has not won outside of this one is Wimbledon. Mary Pierce is 20 years old, born in Montreal and then lived for a long time traveling the circuit as a junior just playing tennis. Lives now in Paris, France, and some in Bradenton, Florida, as well. They call her French, but at best, she's a Franco-American. I mean, I consider her very, very American. Her mother, Yannick, is of French descent, so that's why she has a French passport as well. If she does win this Grand Slam event, it would be the first time since a French woman has won that. Uh, back in 1967, Francois Dur won the French Open. Women's singles final, Ford Australian Open, live coverage. We are in Melbourne, down under in Australia. We Cario and Mary Pierce for the final here at the Ford Australian Open. Played against each other, let's see, five times. Pierce has won one, that was at Hilton Head on the clay last year. They have never played on a hard court, though. I, have w I watched that match where Mary Pierce beat Arantxa Sanchez Vicari. It went three sets, and the interesting thing was uh, Pierce got stronger in that third set. Usually it's Arantxa Sanchez Vicario who wears down opponents in if it gets to a third set. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit different um, today. In fact, I think a hard court is actually a little bit better for Sanchez Vicario than it is for Mary Pierce because on a hard court she'll use Pierce's pace against her. I think it's a little bit difficult for Sanchez Vicario to be as aggressive on a clay court as she can on this hard court where she has excellent footing and can chase down everything. Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, winner of the French Open last year. She defeated Mary Pierce in the final. She also won the U.S. Open over Steffi Graf. One she minute. won Amelia Island, Barcelona, Hamburg, Canadian, to Tokyo, and Oakland. She won more tournaments than any other player on the women's tour. Yeah, a couple different times during 1994, Sanchez Vicario really put together some of her best tennis. She won uh, three different times, or a couple different times, three tournaments in a row. She finished the season very strong. And uh, she's uh, playing very aggressively. I'd be, as Mary, I agree with you, I think she'll come out here bringing her game to a whole different level of aggressiveness. She's really going to have to, isn't she? As for Mary Pierce, Mary. last year at the French Open, she beat Steffi Groff badly and then lost to Sanchez Vicario in the final. Also a finalist in Houston at Leipzig. Novotna beat her there. She lost to Anke Huber, who was the last German player in this tournament, by the way. It filled his start in Philadelphia. Huber beat her as well. In fact, talking about Huber, the Germans did terribly here. They were all out of this thing by the beginning of the second week. Huber was the last German player in it. Michael Stieck went out in the men's and uh, of course Boris Becker lost in the first round so it hasn't been kind to them. It's a little bit unusual when you're pulling up the first weekend of uh, this event and all the Germans are checking out as you're, as you're going. Uh, Steffi Groff, by the way, you know, she's had, she had a bad back the last couple of months in 94. She started off 95 pulling a muscle in her leg and now she has announced today that she's pulling out of the event in Tokyo. So she will be losing ground to Arantxa Sanchez Vicario in the coming weeks in the, in the ratings race anyway. Which means basically that even if Sanchez Vicario doesn't win here and she plays reasonably well the next few weeks, she will be number one in the world, right? She could be, I, it's, you know, it's the same thing. Groff took over the number one spot in June of 1993 after Monica Sellis was stabbed and, uh, and hasn't come back since. And the same thing will be happening if Steffi Groff has to stay out much longer. Hopefully that will not be the case. Talking about how well the Germans did, certainly in the men's division, it was an all-American affair with all four semi-finalists, Agassi, Krikstein, Chang, and Sampras, all from the USA. They have enjoyed their final warm-ups. It is a beautiful day to play. There is not much wind down there at all. The one thing that may be a factor is the heat, but let's be fair and say that that the uh, that's Donna Ring in the chair for today's match. Let's let's, let's say that the heat may be affected, but they are both in excellent condition. These two and ready for this best of three set final. Mary Pierce. Pierce will put the first ball in play.
What a nice start for Mary Pierce. It is absolutely vital to her cause that she gets a nice, confident start against Sanchez Vicario because Sanchez Vicario in the matches coming into this one, even though she hasn't dropped a set, she sort of had to weather the storm in the first sets of her matches and then she, she races through in the second. Oh! Pierce has to declare herself right away. If she doesn't have a good start, she'll have a hard time re-establishing it against the gritty Sanchez Vicario. Double fault, 15 all. A quick reminder, if Arantxa Sanchez Vicario wins today, she'll be the top player in the world on the uh, women's computer. Double fault, that's two in a row, 15-30 yeah, early match nerves. That's too bad, it couldn't be any worse for Pierce starting off like this. Sarancha hasn't had to hit a ball the last two points. You can see how uh, how very close Sanchez Vicario is to that number one spot, something she's dreamed about since she was a little girl. Pierce was out here practicing and warming up on the center court before this final started and she was standing well inside the baseline. She'll be looking to move inside the baseline to impose her game on Sanchez Vicario. Sanchez Vicario needs to keep the ball deep. 30 all first game, two double false and then that long return of serve by Sanchez Vicario. Hasn't gotten in a first serve yet. Yeah, match nerves are going to hurt maybe Pierce worse than they will Sanchez Vicario because Sanchez Vicario has got a bigger margin for error yeah, in her yeah. strokes. One of the things that Sanchez Vicario does so well, especially off this forehand side, she gets tremendous angle, she hooks the forehand, and this is Sanchez Vicario's weapon, this backhand. You'll often see in her statistics that the winners come from the backhand side. Game. She missed it. The players are going to change ends. An early break of serve to Sanchez Vicario, who's trying to become number one in the world. About 24 hours ago. This Ford Australian update is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? In the women's final, just yesterday, in the doubles, Arantxa sanchez Vicari and Yana Novotna at the top of your screen took out the top seeds, Natasha Zverova and Gigi Fernandez. They were up a set, Novotna faults, and she double faulted while serving for the match, but they took it in the third, 6-4. So they are the first uh, title holders at the 90, 1995 Australian Open. So Sanchez Vicario on her day off had a very successful day. Yesterday, the fourth Grand Slam doubles title. Flinders Park in Melbourne, Australia, retractable roof, and uh, they may have to use it yet this afternoon because the rain is not far away. For Mary Pierce, you know that she is hoping that it stays away for at least another 10 minutes or so because she is on the verge of winning her first Grand Slam title. This is the Australian Open Championships from Melbourne. It's the first Grand Slam of the year. Mary Pierce leads by five games to two. She won the first set six games to three from Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, who owns two Grand Slam titles right now. She won the French and the US Open. Four points away for Mary Pierce. She got it. 
Pierce wants a call, but it was clearly on the line. Mary Pierce, a couple of years ago, when I watched her play here at the Australian Open, uh, she did not impress me at all. Her, her manner was so irreverent, and she complained bitterly about every call, and she would screw up her face and look so angry. She has calmed that down a lot now. You see her smile a lot more. She's a lot more self-confident. And it's much more pleasant to watch as a result. 15 all. to a first ever Grand Slam title and to play with such composure. In the middle of that rally, there was a huge thunderbolt <laughs> struck. Thank you. Match point to Mary Pierce. And uh, with it, the championship and title, Australian Open champion. It's 40-15. Grand Slam championship over someone who could have become the number one player in the world. What was at stake for Arantxa Sanchez Bukaria was the top <laughs> ranking in the world. Sven Grunewald, her coach, is delighted for her as Mary Pierce wins in straight sets 6-3 and 6-2. You, you can see the excitement with uh, Sven Grunewald, also Jose Rincon, who's been working so hard with her physically, standing next to Sven, and of course Nick Voltaire at home. He must be going yeah. nuts. Well, any doubts of any kind of uh, mental weakness on Mary Pierce's part has certainly been cast away. I just think this is also great for, for women's tennis as well. You know, it's not the healthiest it's ever been, that's for sure. I think it's a great thing that to start things off, we have a grand new Grand Slam champion. Mary Pierce, the champion here in straight set, 6-3, 6-2 over Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. She is the first Grand Slam winner of 1995 in the singles. Number two in the world, Andre Agassi will take on the world's top player, Pete Sampras, in the men's final here from Melbourne. And that'll come your way tomorrow night at 